The year was 1987, and the turbulent waters of the Persian Gulf served as a backdrop to one of the most harrowing naval incidents in modern history. The USS Stark, a stalwart symbol of American military presence in the region, embarked on a routine patrol mission. Yet, what was meant to be an uneventful voyage soon turned into a nightmarish struggle for survival. This is the story of the USS Stark incident, a tale of heroism, tragedy, and the indomitable human spirit. The Iran-Iraq War, spanning from 1980 to 1988, stands as a poignant chapter in the turbulent history of the Middle East. It was a protracted and brutal conflict that pitted two neighboring nations, Iran and Iraq, against each other. The roots of this war can be traced to long-standing territorial disputes, political tensions, and a quest for regional dominance. The war was not confined solely to the Iran-Iraq border but extended to encompass naval operations, a phase aptly termed the Tanker War. Both sides employed diverse tactics, including the use of mines, missiles, and air attacks, to target each other's tankers and merchant vessels. This phase held substantial implications for global energy markets, as it disrupted oil supplies and raised concerns within the international community. Amidst the turmoil of the tanker war, various countries engaged in support for one side or the other, influencing the course of the conflict. Notably, the United States, while not openly endorsing Iraq, pursued a policy of dual containment. This approach involved providing intelligence information to Iraq and supporting Iran's regional rivals, including Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia. The goal was to maintain a balance of power and prevent the dominance of either Iran or Iraq in the region. France emerged as a significant arms supplier to Iraq after the Soviet Union, during the early stages of the conflict. Weapons, including Mirage fighter jets and Exocet anti-ship cruise missiles, were provided to Iraq, bolstering its air force and overall combat capabilities. The Iran-Iraq War, with its complex geopolitical dynamics, extended far beyond the battlefield. It left a legacy of profound human and economic costs, both within the nations involved and on the global stage. The international community grappled with the disruption of oil supplies, while nations navigated a delicate balancing act to protect their interests and maintain regional stability. This conflict continues to influence the geopolitics of the Middle East, and serves as a reminder of the consequences of regional rivalries and international interventions. The USS Stark Incident The USS Stark, a guided missile frigate, sailed steadily through the Persian Gulf. It was May 17, 1987, and the region was a cauldron of tension due to the ongoing Iran-Iraq war. The Stark's mission was routine, to monitor and ensure the safety of shipping lanes, maintain a visible American presence, and gather intelligence. Captain Glenn Brindill, an experienced naval officer, led the Stark's crew of 220 sailors. For many, it was just another day in the life of a sailor. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the USS Stark maintained its vigil. On May 17, 1987, at 2100 hours, the Stark steamed boldly on a course, set at 300 degrees true. Her path led her through international waters, far removed from the designated war zones declared by both Iraq and Iran. The crew members went about their duties, unaware of the impending disaster that loomed in the darkness. During the Iran-Iraq War, 1980-1988, Iraq desperately attempted to attack Iranian tankers and disrupt Iran's ability to export oil, which was crucial for its economy and war effort. During this pivotal evening, as part of Iraq's campaign targeting Iranian oil tankers, an Iraqi Air Force Mirage F-1 EQ-5, took off from an Iraqi airbase with the intent of launching an attack on an Iranian oil tanker. Contrary to some sources, 
It's suggested that the aircraft in question was not a Mirage F-1, but rather a Dassault Falcon 50 business jet, known by the codename Susanna, specially modified with Mirage F-1 avionics. This unique Falcon 50 variant was reportedly capable of carrying two Exocet missiles on its wing pylons, after the modifications done by Dassault in France. The concept of a Mirage F-1 fighter, carrying two heavy Exocet missiles has been regarded as impractical. In fact, there have been accounts from Iraqi Mirage F-1 pilots suggesting that, even carrying a single Exocet missile significantly impacted the aircraft's maneuverability. Nevertheless, the formal investigation report into the USS Stark attack identifies the aircraft as a Mirage F-1. Even within the report, the concept of a Mirage F-1 carrying two Exocets is acknowledged as a technically complex matter, prompting the involvement of experts from the Naval Systems Command. For the purpose of this documentary, we will proceed with the understanding that a Mirage F-1 was indeed the aircraft employed in executing the attack. At approximately 20 hundred hours, an E-3A Sentry AWACS picked this Iraqi aircraft on radar. As part of Iraq's campaign targeting Iranian oil tankers, an Iraqi Air Force Mirage F-1 EQ-5 took off from an Iraqi airbase with the intent of launching an attack on an Iranian oil tanker. At about 20 hundred hours, an E-3A Sentry AWACS aircraft picked this Iraqi aircraft on radar, which was flying southeastward from Iraq, over the waters heading towards the central Persian Gulf. The AWACS maintained real-time communication with the USS Stark, continuously relaying the Iraqi aircraft's position through the NTDS Link 11. These data links allow AWACS to transmit radar information, track data, and other relevant tactical information to command centers, fighter aircraft, and naval vessels. The AWACS assigned NTDS track number 2202 to the track associated with the Iraqi aircraft. Around 2010 hours, the USS Stark initiated contact with the AWACS, seeking identification of track number 2202. In a swift response, the AWACS confirmed the track number 2202 as an Iraqi military aircraft. Under the directive of Commander Middle East Force, CMEF, the guided missile destroyer, USS Kutz, received the mission to relay the position of the Iraqi aircraft. Commencing at about 2012 hours, shortly after the AWACS began reporting the aircraft's position via data link, Kutz began periodically reporting the Iraqi aircraft's position to CMEF. Kutz was in Port Manama. Bahrain and all her radars were secured. All position information reported to CMEF by Kutz was based on data link from the AWACS, not on information derived from her own radars. Kutz routinely reported that track number 2202 was an Iraqi aircraft. The radio transmissions from the Kutz were monitored in the Starks Combat Information Center. Upon receiving this position information, the Stark's commanding officer issued instructions to the tactical action officer, emphasizing the need for heightened vigilance over Track 2202, considering the recent trend of Iraqi sorties extending further south of the Persian Gulf. At approximately 2024 20, hours, the USS Stark initiated a full power run, steering a course of 300 degrees true. At about 2058 hours, AWACS detected the Iraqi aircraft turning east. At approximately 2101 hours, the USS Stark's long range air search radar, ANSBS 49, detected the Iraqi aircraft. At around 2102 hours, the electronic warfare technician on duty aboard the Stark detected radar emissions from a Cyrano 4 radar system. Cyrano 4 is the air intercept radar carried in Mirage F-1 fighter aircraft. By approximately 2104 hours, the Iraqi Mirage F-1 was identified, at a bearing of 269 degrees positioned at a range of 27 nautical miles, and closing. One minute later, the Iraqi Mirage F-1 fighter executed a maneuver, 
turning towards the Stark, without detection from anyone in the combat information center. At this point, the aircraft was steadily closing in, maintaining a constant bearing, with decreasing range. During the Iran-Iraq War, there were instances where Iraqi pilots were allegedly ordered not to return to base, without firing their missiles at Iranian targets, including tankers and other naval vessels. It's important to note that, the Iran-Iraq War was a protracted and brutal conflict, and both sides used various strategies and tactics, to achieve their goals. These strategies sometimes included orders, to carry out attacks on enemy targets at all costs. However, the specific details and orders given to individual pilots can vary, and not all pilots may have received such directives. Whether ordered to or not, around 2107 hours, the Iraqi pilot locked on to what he mistakenly identified as an Iranian tanker, employing the Cyrano 4 on board fire control radar. From a distance of 22.5 nautical miles, he launched the first Exocet missile, followed by the second Exocet missile just one minute later, this time from a distance of 15.5 nautical miles. Following the launch of both missiles, the Iraqi pilot executed a left bank, and veered away from the USS Stark, his intended target, which he had mistaken for an Iranian tanker. Both missiles were now hurtling toward the Stark, at a speed of 550 miles per hour. As the USS Stark's forward lookout scanned the distant horizon, a sudden intense flash pierced the darkness at about 2107 hours, about 15 degrees off Port Bow. Initially, they attributed it as a surface contact and dismissed it as such. Little did they know, this was the moment, when the Iraqi fighter initiated the launch of its first Exocet missile, a moment that would change the course of events dramatically. The USS Stark's tactical action officer, issued following radio transmission at about 2108 hours, to the incoming unidentified aircraft, over the military air distress frequency. Unknown aircraft. This is US Navy warship on your 078 for 12 miles. Request you identify yourself over. But the Stark received no response. At the same time, the Stark's electronic warfare officer, listening to the Cyrano 4 radar, heard a constant high-pitched signal, through the SLQ-32 console speaker, which endured for 10 seconds. This marked the initial radar lock-on of the first Exocet cruise missile onto the Stark. At the same time, as a precautionary measure, the USS Stark armed its SWOC chaff launchers, and positioned her phalanx Seawiz, close in weapon system, commonly referred to as Seawiz, in standby mode. However, it's important to note that, in standby mode, Seawiz does not engage incoming threats automatically. Moments later, the Stark issued another warning to the Iraqi aircraft, via military air distress circuit. Unknown aircraft. This is US Navy warship on your 076, for 12 miles request you identify yourself and state your intentions over. But again the Stark received no response. At about 21.09 hours, the Stark made an effort, to establish radar lock on the Iraqi aircraft using the shipboard tracking and illuminating radar, STIR. However, this attempt proved unsuccessful, as the Iraqi contact remained within the STIR blind zone. But the Stark somehow managed, to lock onto the Iraqi aircraft using continuous acquisition and slew radar, when the aircraft was approximately 10 nautical miles away. At the same time, the Stark observed the first Exocet missile inbound, just a few moments before the impact, but the missile was unchallenged. At 21.09 hours, the first missile found its mark. Impacting the port side hull in proximity to the bridge area, although it failed to detonate as intended. However, the remaining solid rocket fuel from the missile ignited, instigating a colossal blaze. The second Exocet struck its target approximately 20 to 30 seconds after the first and exploded. Inflicting substantial damage upon the Stark's bridge structure and combat information center. 
The impact of both strikes birthed a nightmarish inferno. Captain Brindill, issued an urgent distress call, signaling the magnitude of the crisis. The Stark was in desperate need of assistance, and time was running out. The crew of the ship, initiated damage control measures to combat the fires, and secure the ship. Additionally, assistance was provided by other U.S. Navy vessels in the vicinity. The USS Waddell, another U.S. Navy destroyer, arrived to provide immediate aid and support to the USS Stark. The USS Waddell acted as on-scene commander and offered assistance in fighting the fires, providing medical support to the injured, and helping with the overall recovery efforts. The Stark's radio communications were lost. PRC radios from aircrew survival vests were used to establish communications with USS Waddell, the on-station AWACS and the AWACS controller on military air distress frequency. The combined efforts of the USS Waddell, and the crew of the USS Stark played a crucial role in mitigating the damage, saving lives, and ultimately preventing the loss of the ship. As the smoke cleared and the fires were brought under control, the true extent of the tragedy became evident. The USS Stark had suffered significant casualties. Thirty-seven crew members had lost their lives, and many others were injured. The toll on the survivors, both physically and emotionally, was immeasurable. International Response News of the USS Stark's distress reached the international community. Concerned nations, including the United States, launched efforts to assist the stricken frigate. The world watched anxiously as events unfolded in the Persian Gulf. Tom Gerald. Good evening. The guided missile frigate USS Stark is afire, listing and barely underway in the Persian Gulf tonight after being hit by an Exocet missile in an attack by Iraqi warplanes. The ship's crew sustained serious casualties and Pentagon sources say at least one seaman is believed dead, while several others are thought to have gone overboard. Official Pentagon spokesmen believe the attack was not hostile but a case of mistaken identity. Regardless, Secretary of State Schultz said tonight the U.S. considers the matter gravely serious and is demanding a full accounting from Iraq's government. The incident had the potential to escalate tensions in an already volatile region. Diplomatic channels buzzed with activity as leaders worked to prevent further conflict. Saddam Hussein, the president of Iraq at the time of the USS Stark incident, did issue an apology following the attack. On May 19, 1987, Saddam Hussein publicly expressed his regret, and offered condolences to the United States, for the attack on the USS Stark. He described the incident as a mistake and claimed that the Iraqi pilot, had mistakenly identified the USS Stark as an Iranian vessel. Saddam Hussein's apology was seen by some as an attempt to avoid further escalation with the United States, as the attack on a U.S. Navy vessel had raised tensions in the region. The United States, in turn, conducted its own investigation into the incident, and engaged in diplomatic efforts with Iraq. Saddam Hussein's regime agreed to pay financial compensation to the families of the victims as part of the efforts to resolve the incident diplomatically. The compensation was intended to provide some form of redress for the loss of life and injuries caused by the attack. The United States and Iraq engaged in negotiations, and eventually, Iraq agreed to pay compensation to the United States. The exact amount of compensation and the details of the settlement are not publicly available, but it was part of the diplomatic resolution of the incident. This compensation was provided to the families of the 37 American sailors who lost their lives in the attack, and to those who were injured. Ultimately, the incident did not lead to a full-scale conflict between the United States and Iraq, but it did have significant diplomatic and political repercussions. It highlighted the dangers of the Iran-Iraq war and the potential for misunderstandings and miscalculations in a volatile region. Remembering the Fallen In the years that followed, memorials and ceremonies were held to honor the fallen sailors of the USS Stark. 
Their sacrifice served as a poignant reminder of the risks faced by those who serve in the military. Their names were etched in history, and their memory lived on in the hearts of their loved ones and fellow servicemen. The USS Stark incident remains etched in history as a testament to the courage, resilience, and unwavering spirit of those who faced unimaginable adversity. It serves as a somber reminder of the sacrifices made by servicemen, and women in the line of duty. While the incident was a tragic chapter in the annals of naval history, it also led to important changes in naval procedures and protocols. The lessons learned from the USS Stark incident continue to inform the training and preparedness of military personnel around the world. As we reflect on this dark chapter, we must also remember the light that emerged from the depths of tragedy, the bravery of the crew, the resilience of the human spirit, and the enduring legacy of those who perished aboard the USS Stark. Their sacrifice will never be forgotten. If you find content like this engaging, consider subscribing and enabling the notification bell to stay updated with our latest releases. We welcome your comments in the comments section, and if you come across any inaccuracies in this video series, feel free to correct them with verified information. Please show your support by hitting the like button. Thank you.